evening, everyone. As you can see, the crowd is already filing in for tonight's Comcast High School Game of the Week, pitting the Gadsden High Tigers against the Etowah Blue Devils. Welcome in, everyone. I'm Phil Collins. And this game, pitting the number three ranked Gadsden High School Tigers against the Etowah Blue Devils, ranked number four in the state. Doesn't need any more hype than it already has, but we're Mr. Excitement. Mark Marson's going to join us anyway. Mark, welcome. Thank you, and, and I am excited tonight. I tell you, I was going through some things around the house today, and I realized that I've still got game films from 12 years ago of the Etowah game and the game ball. I tell you, the game tonight is important, not only just for tonight and this season, but these guys are going to remember this game the rest of their lives. It's exciting to think about. You're absolutely right. I couldn't be more excited, and the town of Gadsden could not be more excited. The hype is terrific, as we already said, and Mark, the Etowah Blue Devils picked an excellent time last week to start getting their offense in gear. They're sput they've sputtered all year, but all of a sudden they get the offense in gear against the 6A Gardendale Rockets. They really did, you know. They've had a strong defense all year, and we've known that. But last year, the offense, uh, they got a wake-up call. Uh, Kenneth Sism woke them up with a 99-yard uh, touchdown run to start the second half. And from that point on, they've really controlled the line of scrimmage at offense. They were able to do whatever they wanted. And so it really was a wake-up call. We're going to see if they can carry that on through tonight. Well, uh, it will be interested to see. Also, though, there is another team in this matchup, the number three ranked Gadsden High Tigers. Tell us what they're uh, up against tonight. Well, we know that, uh, that Gadsden's got a strong team, probably the strongest all-around team that I've seen this year so far. They do a lot of things. We know they got the great runner in Jimmy Williams, but the big test for Gadsden tonight is going to be how their defense uh, reacts to Etowah's offense because Etowah does a lot of things on offense, and they've got a lot of tools that Gadsden's got to be careful about tonight. Yeah, I think everybody has just understood that Etowah's defense is great as well as Gadsden High's offense. So why don't you take this opportunity to show us on Chalk Talk how the Etowah offense is going to go up against the Gadsden High defense, and I'll hold the mic for you. I'll be glad to. It's real simple. Uh, Etowah does a lot of things on, on offense. They will actually call a lot of audibles. And how you do that uh, for you beginners and the people that don't really know anything about how a play is called, the quarterback is numbered uh, number one. The uh, fullback is numbered number three, and the tailback number two, and the slot man usually number four. Let's say Etowah is in a running, a running situation tonight, and they may have they may have 31 dive called. Now, how the holes are numbered is also interesting. On the, on the right side of the ball, it's even two, four, and six. And on the left side of the ball, it's one, three, and five. Therefore, it's easy to understand if they have 31 dive called, it's going to be the three back through the one hole. What the quarterback looks at when he comes to the line of scrimmage, Gaston does a lot of, a lot of stunts, especially on the inside. And if he feels like that these linebackers here are going to stunt on the inside and he sees that, he recognizes that Gaston's strong side is to the left side. Both the linebackers are stunning on the inside, so therefore he wants to call the play on the right side. Now how he does that, Phil, just like in baseball, the third uh, base coach has a key. Edwall's key tonight may be the color blue. If he calls the color blue and he follows it with the number 24 or 26, blue alerts his lineman that a new play is coming. If he says red 14 or red anything, it doesn't mean a thing, but when he says the word blue, it's a new play. He calls blue 24, the linebackers shoot in, the tackle blocks down, this guy blocks out, and look what you have. 24 or 26, you have a long gainer, and that's what Ed Wall is looking to do tonight. In passing situations, the same thing occurs. The quarterback will come out here and look and try to determine whether the defense is in a man-to-man -man or a zone. If he finds them in a man-to-man, -man, you better believe they have a little weapon out here that's gonna tear them apart, and Mr. Malone, the split in. If he gets this man, man-to-man -man coverage, he will go down and veer out. He makes these catches great. He comes back to the ball. If the quarterback can fake pump it and get the Gaston man to commit himself early, he will turn and go deep, and they'll beat him just about every time. If it's a zone coverage, they'll do a lot of crossing in here with these runner backs, and the defensive backs just can't stay with them. If you use audibles on offense, it's, it's really hard to defense against. Well, that, uh, keeping that in mind, that'll be interesting to see how that one unfolds. The, uh, both teams have uh, fairly strong defenses. Etowah certainly has been uh, probably the more publicized defense, and uh, conversely, Gadsden High's offense has been a little stronger in the press. But we're going to see tonight how two teams match up against each other. Uh, both teams have been plagued by a lot of penalties this year. Let's see if they can work that out. It's going to be an interesting one. For Mark Morrison, this is Phil Collins. We're glad you joined us, everyone. If you'll hang on just a minute, we'll be back with coaches' interviews. Stay with us. At Professional Opticians, your comfort and personal satisfaction are very important. 
we offer a wide selection of frames to fit every need and every budget. Professional Opticians uses only first quality lenses, and our lens fabricating laboratory ensures the finest quality. Our technicians work hard to make sure your glasses are exactly what the doctor ordered. With something as important as your eyesight, you deserve the very best. You can trust the professionals at Professional Opticians. Tuxedo Inn, your formal wear leader and wedding specialist for over 20 years. Tuxedo Inn, Gadsden and Etowah County's only complete in-stock formal wear service. Tuxedo Inn, featuring over 12,000 in-stock tuxedos with over 80 styles by famous designers like Pierre Cardin, Lord West, and After Six. Tuxedo Inn offers the groom's tuxedo rental absolutely free with five or more in the wedding party. Tuxedo Inn, 1501 Rainbow Drive, across from Days Inn. Tuxedo Inn, open nights till 8. Etowah Quality of Life Council is here for you with the newly developed maternal and child health program. In many cases of unplanned pregnancies, expectant mothers have to be mentally as well as physically prepared for the task of parity. The maternal and child program is designed to meet these needs for low-income women through prenatal care, nutritional counseling, WIC program, and transportation to one of our three clinics. If you have need of our services, visit one of our clinics or call Etowah Quality of Life Council, 546-4606 or 492-0131. She's losing the war against weeds and about to find out about Steele's Cut and Trim. I quit. Weeds. Can I help you, ma'am? Weeds. You got it. Weeds. Weeds. Steele's new Cut and Trim. It'll cut any weed you can grow. Weeds. Yes, ma'am. Steel's Cut and Trim. Famous steel quality at a small price. Visit your steel dealer. He's a really good guy to know. Leave. Come see all the steel products on sale at Alabama Contractors Equipment. Welcome back, everyone. This is Phil Collins. I'm here with Wyman Townsville, the coach of the Etowah Blue Devils. And, Coach, you uh, voiced some concern before last week's game about your running backs, but uh, it looks like they finally got in gear and had a pretty good game last week. Well, you know, one of them did, that number 21 that you see over here on the sideline. He uh, he uh, had a pretty good first quarter, and then he retore his ankle up, so we're not going to get to use him tonight. That's uh, Deverick Howard. Tell us about the uh, penalties last week. You had a few penalties in the game, and other than that, it was, it was pretty much, a, uh, a, from appearances' sake, a pretty much a perfect game for the Blue Devils. Well, you know, youngsters being what they are and being over anxious, and we go over those things all the time, and uh, there's going to be some penalties, and uh, there's a lot of ways to make some mistakes, and I feel like it's, you know, really when you start out coaching this thing here, you uh, the number one thing that you have to do is try to keep from beating yourself, and uh, the team usually does a better job than that, and I'm talking about things like turnovers and penalties and offsides and, it, you know, the whole, whole uh ball of wax there, uh, you're going to have a whole lot better chance to win if you can avoid that type of thing. Right, and could be the key to tonight's whoever wins this game tonight is whoever turns the ball over the least. Um, last week you had some key injuries in the defensive backfield. How did your injury picture look this week? Well, we're hurting a little bit there. Our, uh, of course, we lost our tail back, and we lost him the first quarter against Tuscaloosa County, our opening ball game, and he's tried to come back last week, and he looked real good. He got us, you know, our second touchdown there down on the goal line, and then uh, we returned him a second half, uh, didn't play him a whole lot more the first half, and then he came up there on a little sweet play and he re-messed his ankle up. He's, he's not even dressed out tonight. And then the big thing there, we had uh, our starting guard and one of our better offensive linemen, linemen that uh, expressed uh, upset stomach before the ball game, and being the doctor I am, I gave him a dose of Pepto-Bismol and told him to get out there and play and suck it up. Uh, Dr. Goodlett came in. He uh, uh, he came out of the ball game and said he was sick, and he examined him, and he immediately at halftime last week sent him to the hospital and had his appendix removed. So we're hurting a little bit in that offensive line also. Well, the uh, the team that you're putting on the field looks uh, fully capable of doing a good job tonight. We appreciate you joining us and, and wish you the best tonight in the matchup against the Tigers. Well, it's, it's just one of those things here that uh, Gadsden's very fortunate. They've come up here and they've They've got some outstanding athletes, and it's going to be one of those things. If they play the best they can possibly play, and we play the best we possibly can play, uh, uh, maybe it may not be much of a contest. But if they come up there and, and we get the breaks and 
gets and decides they've already got this thing won, then it might be a long night for them. Well, we look forward to seeing which of those scenarios come true. Thanks for joining us, Coach, and, and we'll be right back with Coach Di Lorenzo in just a second. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate it. Again, I'm Mark Marston, and I'm here again this week with Coach DeLorenzo. Coach, we've got to quit meeting like this, don't we? It yeah. seems like every week we're coming to do. No, maybe we should keep meeting like this because every time I do, it seems like you guys have climbed a little higher in the standings. Well, I'm pretty superstitious, so, you know, if, if it if this means we're going to win tonight and get a little bit higher in the standings, heck, I say let's do it again. Okay, we'll do it every week. A win tonight really solidifies the fact that uh, it tells people that Gaston at the end of the playoffs uh, is going to be around probably playing somebody for the crown. Uh, you think it's that important tonight? Well, you know, I, I think there's a long time to go between now and the playoffs. I think last year, you know, I felt like that even though we lost the game, we still had a great shot to go on in the playoffs in advance. Now, uh, we didn't, but I don't think it was the loss to Etowah that kept us from going any further than we did, which was not very far. So this game is important in that, you know, we're playing a quality football team, not a very quality football team. And if we can win, it means that maybe we've got a good football team as well. Well, we mentioned the standings. Uh, you leapfrogged Edwall this week. Uh, you're at number three, they're at number four. Edwall's got a strong team, and I know in looking at the films, you know they've got a lot, a lot of strong points. What do you think their, their strengths are tonight? Well, their quickness, their size, they're very big. Uh, their skilled people are excellent. Their offensive line is good. Their kicking game is solid, and they've got a couple of great football players. And anytime you've got a great football player on your team, then you're capable of scoring on one play, and that's dangerous. Well, I know in watching films, not only do you notice strengths, but you also are trying to look for some weaknesses or something that you can you can attack. Where do you think your, your team's going to attack tonight? Well, you know, as far as our defense goes, we don't think offensively they have very many weaknesses, if any. So we're just going to try to play base and try to get after them and, and, and try to just get 11 folks around the football. Their defense has only let, off, let up five points a game. Um, you know, we're going to try to look and see whether they're playing a strong side or weak side or whether they're balanced up. If they're balanced up, then we'll probably go to our strong side. If they're shading one side or the other, we're going to go the other way. Now, I hate to say this last thing, but uh, 13, <laughs> I hate to hear it. 13 to nothing, <laughs> 7 to 6, 30 to 28, and then last year, four in a row. Five in a row doesn't sound too good, does it? No, it, it doesn't. And uh, But I tell you, um, we have never been beaten by an inferior Etowah team, and I say inferior. The Etowah teams that have beat us have been good, uh, and, and we've played nearly as hard and as well as we could play in those losses. As long as we do that, um, it happens to be Etowah that we've lost four games to in the last four years, but uh, as long as our kids keep kind of giving the kind of effort and conducting themselves on the field with the class and the poise and the pride that they've done in the past, well, it's been five years, but uh, since I've been here, um, I guarantee you I can still sleep at night. Well, let's don't give them one for the thumb. I want to wish you all the luck in the world tonight, okay? Thanks very Thanks much. Thanks for coming okay. by. And we'll be right back with the kickoff in just a minute. We're back, everyone. And as you can see, the captains are in the middle of the field as the Etowah Blue Devils come on to the field. This is the one that everyone's been waiting for in Gadsden, the matchup between the Number three ranked Gadsden High Tigers and the number four ranked Etowah Blue. Here come the Gadsden High School Tigers. As you can see the Tigers coming through the student body line there. Looks like half the student body's on the field with them. And in the meantime, we've got the coin toss at midfield. Gadsden High's captains, Jimmy Williams, number 34. DJ Davis is number 15, the captain for the Tigers. And then uh, number 72 is Will Albright. Shane Watts is number 87. And Chris Elders, of course, the quarterback of the Gadsden High Tigers, along with Carlos Lawrence, the defensive player and Etowah is going to receive Gadsden High School will kick. We're glad you joined us everyone for tonight's broadcast of Comcast High School Game of the Week. If this this one lives up to the to the um, hype you're gonna see a good one. You can see a terrific 
Etowah Blue Devil crowd as expected, almost filling the visitor side of Murphy Stadium and we'll be getting some shots of the Gadsden High crowd as the game goes on. Etowah, Etowah High School will be kicking off, or rather receiving Andy Swafford to kick off for the Gadsden High School Tigers. Of course, Todrick Malone, the all-everything wide receiver, is deep to receive the kick, along with Bobby Hill, who is number three. And Mark, we're ready to kick this one off for the what could be the playoff-bound winner between these two teams. I think the winner here, Phil, is uh, definitely the favorite to go to the finals of the state. No question about it. There's a kickoff that goes deep in the corner and out of bounds. They will re-kick after a five-yard penalty is stepped off, if that's what Edward so chooses to do, and that is what they've chosen to do. Phil, we're going to get a chance to see uh, the matchup that we mentioned in the pregame. Etowah's offense against Gadsden's defense, and uh, in talking with the defensive coaches of Gadsden, they told me that they're going to try to disguise a lot of their defensive formations, try to confuse Mr. Kitchens on offense so that when he does audibleize, he might audible to the wrong play. There's the second kick by Andy Swafford is taken in at the seven yard line by Todrick Malone who goes to the far side of the field and is run out of bounds by a host of Gadsden High Tigers which included number 15 DJ Davis. So the Etowah Blue Devils will take over on the first offensive series of the night at their own 19 yard line. Freddie Kitchens brings the Blue Devils to the line. They're out running out of the eye formation. One split wide to the right, and there's the give to the fullback right up the middle. That's Michael Gla or rather Calvin Stewart, who runs good for two yards, second and down and eight for the Blue Devils. Phil, it's going to be interesting to see if Etowah tries to establish that running game again this week. Number 56, Steve Griffith, who was a captain last week, is out this week with an injury. And last week, they did receive that wake-up call that we talked about and got things going. It may be difficult without Mr. Griffith in there. You may be right, Mark. And the stop there was by Roderick Thomas. There's the give again to the fullback, who pulls ahead this time for good for first down yardage. It's going to be close, but first down yard. stop was made by Stan Roberts, who is number 29 for the Gadsden High Tigers. That was Calvin Stewart for the Blue Devils. Right up the gut. Two times in a row, Mark. The most surprising thing that I heard uh, when I heard that Etowah was having trouble running the ball, when I first looked at that offensive line and saw that size, they've got some very big people, and it's hard to understand why they haven't been able to do so on the first two plays tonight. They did. Wide to the left is Todd Lambert for the Blue Devils. Todrick Malone is wide to the right. There's the give to the tailback. Kinesism at right tackle. He's piled up after a, that was a third and short. That was not a first down. Let's see if they get the first down here, and they do. So they will move the change this time. Stop was made by Broderick Castleberry of the Tigers. But not until Kinesism got the first down for the Blue Devils. They'll take the first down yardage at their 29 and a half yard line where they will go from there first and 10 yardage with 10-26 in the first quarter with the clock running. There's a quick timeout. Looks like an equipment timeout. A another wonderful night for Comcast Cable football. Todd Malone split to the near side for the Blue Devils. He's the star. There's Kitchens rolling right on a busted play. He cuts back to the left and dives forward for maybe two yards. Stop was made by Ricky Tillis of the Gadsden High Tigers. Broken play there. It looks like uh, Kitchens started to roll right and saw something that he didn't anticipate. So he ducked back in to the left to pick up the two yards, hard fought yards. 
I think when you look at Todrick Malone, you have to be concerned with the passing game, and Edwall comes out tonight with three straight running plays, trying to set up that passing game. If they're able to run, it will also open up that passing game for them. And Freddie Kitchens can certainly pass the ball. He's got a terrific receiver in Todrick Malone. There's, a, there's the first checkoff of the night, Mark. He crossed wrist, and he gives to the tailback, Kenneth Sism, who dives ahead for a pickup of four yards. Third down and five yards for the Blue Devils. Here's the conversion down for the Devils. Stop was made by Will Albright, the captain and player for the Gaston High Tigers that plays both ways, of course, number 72. He fell a huge hole on the right side that time. If he hadn't got tripped up by the guy that was really lying on the field, he would have gained about 10 or 15 yards. He's lucky they stopped him after that short game. For those of us that joined it, those of you that joined us as an alternative to the Clarence Thomas Judiciary hearings, we're glad you're here. I'm certainly one of those, getting a little tired of that. There's a fumble. Pitch and a fumble is re-picked up by Kenneth Sism at the 45-yard line. He gained seven yards after the fumble, picked up his own fumble and got out to the 45-yard line of the Blue Devils and the Blue Devil first down. Phil, again, he had the play that time on the left side. If he hadn't have fumbled, he would have, he would have picked up the yardage anyway, but he does fumble the ball, and that, that ball takes some crazy bounces. Fortunately for Edwall, it bounced right back up into his arm. A black jersey for the Tigers had a chance at the fumble, but he was blocked by an Edwall lineman right past the loose ball, and Kenneth Sism was able to fall on the fumble or pick up the fumble and fall for another yard. There's Sism on the counter play, off right tackle. Pulls his way out to the 49-yard line in Gadsden High Territory. Stop was made by Ricky Tillis of the Tigers. Phil, I'm telling you, if Gadsden is unable to stop that run, they're going to have all kind of problems tonight because it's going to open up that passing game. Uh, they've got to make some adjustments to stop the run. And if they do too much, they're going to have to leave Todrick Malone alone one-on-one. -on -one. And when you do that, you're spelling death. That's a terrific point, Mark. The question mark for this Blue Devil team was the running game and they're showing absolutely no signs of being intimidated by that terrific Gadsden High defense thus far. There's Kitchens under center. He gives to his tailback. That's Bobby Hill this time replacing Kinesism. He works his way out to the 45 yard line. It looks like it will be enough for a Gads a rather a Etowah first down. They're going to bring in the chains but Rather, no, they're not going to bring on the chains. They're going to move the chains. A first down for the Blue Devils. Stop was made again by Will Albright. Again, Phil, if you could uh, slow that down and replay that, you would see as soon as the ball is snapped, the Gadsden High line is moving back at least two yards every time. They're really blowing them off the line. Etowah's controlling the line of scrimmage. We're going to fit in the starters for tonight's game as time permits. There's Kitchens barking out more signals. There's the pitch to the tailback. Once again, at right end, Bolts through an a opening, tries to cut his way back and can't do it. Falls ahead, however, for seven yards. Make it nine yards on the run. Stop was made by Andy Swafford. He ran Bobby Hill out of bounds after a gain of seven on the play. Second down and three for the Blue Devils. Let me run down these starting lineups, uh, starting offensive lineup for Etowah, of course. Mark McNichols is the tight end. Mark Mullins and Jeremy Gray are the tackles. Jamie Pierce is the guard. Brent Chastain is the center, split in Todrick Malone. Todd Lambert is the wingback. Kenneth Sism is the running back. There's a run right up the middle. That was Calvin Stewart, the fullback, up the middle on the play. And there's another first down for the Etowah Blue Devils after the stop by about five or six Gadsden High Tigers. And Kenneth Sism, as I said, was the starting tailback for the Blue Devils. Calvin Stewart at fullback. Freddie Kitchens, of course, at quarterback. We'll get to that Gadsden High defense in just a minute. But first, Kitchens has two wideouts to either side of the field. Todrick Malone to the near side. Keep an eye on him on first and ten. There's the pitch to the tailback again. And he is thrown down after a gain of three by Broderick Castleberry. That run again was by Bobby Hill, number three of the Etowah Blue Devils. The gain was for two yards. That brings up a second down and eight for the Blue Devils. You can tell, Phil, that Gadsden's got Todrick Malone on their mind. They, uh, they put Andy Swafford out there and make it appear that they have him one-on-one, -on -one, but then they sneak Broderick Castleberry out there, and that time he scooted a little bit too far and it enabled them to run the pitch to the left side and have a hole. Here he comes again, the same, same exact defense. These tailbacks that you see as Edward or Kitchens gives to his tailback. He bounces outside for no gain, stopped by a host of Gadsden High Tigers. 
which included Dexter Lewis, number 26. The run was by Bobby Hill, and Andy Swafford was also in on the tackle for the Tigers. The tailbacks, as I was going to say, Mark, are filling in for an injured Deverett Howard, who was injured in the first quarter last week against Gardendale. He was their premier back, originally injured, as you heard Coach uh, Towns will say in the pregame interview he was injured originally in the Tuscaloosa County game so they're sorely missing him but to this point in this game they haven't shown any signs of missing him at all. Third and seven for the Blue Devils there was a gain of about a half a yard on the play there's a blitz by Gadsden High he's got Kitchens he's going to throw him down whistle dead way back at the 46 yard line a blitz by Broderick Castleberry and he caught the Edouard offense completely by surprise. Now, Phil, I've seen Edouard do this many times. Uh, they do this with Rozelle Bradford themselves on the defensive side of the ball. Gaston this time stunts, sending him. He leaves the coverage to take the quarterback, hoping that he can get there before he can get the pass off. What a time for the big play by the Gadsden High defense. They had given up several yards, but they stopped them when they had to. There's the punt deep to Chris Elders. Chris Elders takes in the kick of Freddie Kitchens, cuts right, and is swarmed under by four, maybe five, Edouard defenders. Let's uh, take a break at four, with 440 remaining in the change of possession. This is Comcast High School football. We'll be back in a moment. Of all the important safety features we put in the new Camry, some may seem a bit extravagant. Stronger body construction, child protector rear door locks, rear seat headrests, adjustable front seat belt anchors, standard driver side airbag, available anti-lock brakes. But when it came to safety, we didn't ask what it costs. We asked what it could save. The all new 1992 Toyota Camry. We just couldn't leave well enough alone. Come see the 1992 Camry at Heritage Toyota, 563 East Megan Boulevard, Gadsden. It's feeding time for the beast in the basement again, and you know what that old furnace is going to do to your utility bills. But you don't have to let that monster upset your budget. Hello, I'm Bill Faubus with Faubus Sheet Metal. I'm your Alabama Power Certified Electric Heat Pump dealer in Gadsden. We have financing available on approved credit, so call today for a free in-home estimate. Thank you. At Hicks Family Shoes, North Alabama's largest home-owned family shoe store, sizes and widths are our specialty. We carry a full line of quality footwear, including Naturalizer, Selby, Rockport, and Buster Brown. No matter what the need, Hicks Family Shoes can please even the choosiest feet. So the next time you're shopping for quality footwear, drop by Hicks Family Shoes. We refuse to be undersold. Hicks Family Shoes, 430 Broad Street, downtown Gadsden. back everyone with Gadsden High School taking over on their first offensive possession of the evening. First and 10 from the 11 yard line of the Tigers. There's the give to Jimmy Williams who hands it off to Andy Swafford. On the end around he's thrown for a loss by the Etowah defender. That was Toby Bateman in the defensive back in the offensive backfield rather of the Gadsden High Tigers. Swafford was thrown for about a five yard loss. Gadsden High starting off in quite a hole here. Second down and 15 from the 14-yard line. Really not a bad idea. They, they thought the defense would really key on Jimmy Williams, especially the first play of the game. They thought they would hit him with a little misdirection, but it did not work. They are rather on the 8-yard line. I think I said the 14. They're on the 8. There's the give again to Swafford, who swerves outside, ducks his head inside, and again is thrown down by several Etowah Blue Devils, which included Chris Farmer and also Michael Gladden along with the Toby Bateman, who had an excellent defensive game last week, again against the 6A Gardendale Rockets. 3.26 remaining with the clock running. Gadsden High School has third down and nine and a half to go 
in this, their first offensive series. The starters for Gadsden High's offense are Shane Watts at tight end, Ricky Tillis at right tackle, right guard is Kendrick Lewis, David Ray is the center, Derek Sparks the left guard, left tackle is Adrian Cunningham, Stan Roberts is the split end, and I'll get to the other starters in just a moment. There's the give to fake, rather, to Jimmy Williams, and Elders is going to pass complete to that Stan Roberts, who is good for the first down all the way out to the 30, or rather 28 yard line, first and 10 for the Gaston High School. Pretty good pass there by Chris Elders. Great play, Phil. Usually they set that up by putting Andy in motion. That time they uh, made the fake to Jimmy Williams instead, and uh, good hands on the part of Stan Roberts. They got him playing on defense also because he's got such great hands. The remaining starters are, of course, Shane Simpson at fullback, Jimmy Williams, the all-star candidate at tailback, and Chris Elders is the quarterback. He's a senior. There's the give to Williams on his first legitimate run. He breaks through. He's got running room. Forget it, folks. He's going all the way. Jimmy Williams. Jimmy Williams, touchdown, Tigers. There's the give to Williams on his first legitimate run. He breaks through. He's got running room. Forget it, folks. He's going all the way. Jimmy Williams. Jimmy Williams, touchdown. Gadsden High School strikes for a 72-yard touchdown run on the first run by Jimmy Williams. Phil, nothing really fancy about it. Gadsden does this week in and week out. They don't change it for anybody. Again, they give the ball to Jimmy Williams, coming the opposite direction. Gaston likes to get those offensive linemen out there by pulling them. That time, Ricky Tillis made a beautiful block that freed up Jimmy Williams, and there's no way you're going to catch him once he gets in the open. Stan Roberts on the hold for John Giles, and he pokes it through. It's good. With 2.24 remaining, let's take a break on the Comcast High School Game of the Week. When that special time calls for a special touch, that's when you need Child's Art Studio. Now open in Rainbow City, that special touch is applied to every portrait, every wedding picture, every special moment. Plus, you get the finest quality commercial photography, even passports while you wait. Visit Child's all-new custom frame salon, featuring over 200 wood frames and 240 metal frames. Mats all cut to your specs. Child's Art Studio, now in Rainbow City at 119 Church Street. Swafford puts the boot to the Bobby Hill who is on the three yard line. He's got a little gap. He runs through it, but he's thrown down at the 25 yard line by Fred Wright of the Tigers. Boy, Phil, if he cuts left, uh, it's bye bye birdie because uh, he had a hole on this side. You and I could see it from here. Yeah, it's easy to see from up here, though. Let's see if uh, they can exploit that anytime during the night. 2.16 to go with the clock stopped. Etowah takes over. Freddie Kitchens comes in. The starting defense for the Tigers tonight was Mar Marcellus Mostella and Tommy Gargas of the ends, Will Hilber or rather Albright, and Ricky Tillis of the tackles. Corey Tabb will see plenty of playing time at tackle also. Linebackers Carlos Lawrence and Roderick Thomas. Outside is Jeff Mosley. There's the run by Kenneth Sism at right tackle. He is stood up and thrown down by Dexter Lewis of the Tigers. Good bit of running there by Kenneth Sism. Pickup was good for five yards. That brings up second and five. The outside linebackers for the Tigers, Jeff Mosley and Broderick Castleberry, Andy Swafford, Percy Davis are the cornerbacks, and Stan Roberts is the safety. Phil, again, the initial movement of the Gaston line, defensive line, is backwards. Uh, they're picking up five yards every time they run the ball. Second and five for the Edwall Blue Devils. That's Sism, and he is clotheslined at the line of scrimmage, maybe it may have lost a yard. Thrown down by Roderick Thomas of the Tigers. What a tackle. Great play by Roderick. Uh, plays it out, 
all the way to the sideline, never lets them get it turned up field. The shoulders turned up field, and now they're faced with a third and five, and I think we're going to see a pass here, Phil. Passing situation for the Blue Devils, third and six. We'll see Kitchen's arm here, and he displayed a terrific throwing arm last week, Mark. It really crisp passes, very composed in the backfield. Let's see if, if uh, we get to see that displayed here. Todd Lambert split to the wide side, and they're going for it all with Todd Ritten alone running underneath it, but he won't get underneath that one. Overthrown with 37 seconds remaining, the clock stops, and Edouard will have to punt. Coverage there by, was by, rather, was by Andy Swafford. It's obvious, it's obvious to see what Gaston plans to do with Mr. Malone on defense. They're letting Andy go ahead and play up, taking the short pass away. Uh, Roderick came up and gave him just a little step, really didn't cut one way or the other, and just kept going upfield. And they're asking Stan Roberts in the safety position to come over and help him deep on him. He helped nicely there. There was a high snap to Kitchens, and the fair catch is called for by Chris Elders of the Tigers. The Tigers will take over at the 37-yard line. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back in a moment on Comcast High School Football. Everyone with 30 seconds to go in the first quarter of play, the, you can see the referees marching off a personal foul penalty. That's a 15-yarder charged against the Gadsden High team for a late hit on the punt, uh, a late blocking hit. The officials for tonight's game, the referee is Richard Maddock, umpire Barry Thomas, Willie Mayo is the line judge. The linesman is Jeff Chappell. Back judge is Mr. Orman Brown. And the clock operator is Bill Reed, another veteran cast of officials for tonight's game. Great crew. We've talked about them before, too, Phil, and they've been written up in the paper. It's a great crew to watch. They really work well together. With 26 seconds remaining, I can't resist any longer. Do the Tigers have a new head for their mascot this week, or is it just my <laughs> imagination? It's a mighty big head, isn't it, Phil? It's, I don't know. Maybe you could head. say that uh, Gadsden has got the big head. Last, uh, they're not showing it on the, or rather, they're showing that they can back it up, though, on the scoreboard. I think that's a new one. That looks great. They are resetting the clock at 30 seconds. There they have it, and we're ready to continue football here with 30 seconds to go in the first quarter of play. I started to make mention of that to uh, Mitch Moore just a second ago. Uh, it looked like a cat down there instead of a, a tiger. Well, Mitch asked me if they had changed mascots too. I think it's just a new head. There's a give to Jimmy Williams who weaves his way forward for a pickup of about four yards. That's going to give the Tigers a second down and 25. Stop was by David Rose, the all-star guard of the Etowah Blue Devils. 12 seconds to go, and as the clock winds down, let me tell you that this is Phil Collins along with Mark Marson bringing you Comcast High School football. We'll take a break at the quarter and be back in a moment. Quality of Life Council is here for you with the newly developed maternal and child health program. In many cases of unplanned pregnancies, expectant mothers have to be mentally as well as physically prepared for the task of parenting. The maternal and child program is designed to meet these needs for low-income women through prenatal care, nutritional counseling, WIC program, and transportation to one of our three clinics. If you have need of our services, visit one of our clinics or call Etowah Quality of Life Council, 546-4606 or 492-0131. She's losing the war against weeds and about to find out about Steel's cut and trim. I quit. Weeds. Can I help you, ma'am? Weeds. Got weeds. Weeds. Steel's new cut and trim. It'll cut any weed you can grow. Weeds. Yes, ma'am. Steel's Cut and Trim. Famous steel quality at a small price. Visit your steel dealer. He's a really good guy to know. Leave. Come see all the steel products on sale at Alabama Contractors Equipment. 
Tuxedo Inn, your formal wear leader and wedding specialist for over 20 years. Tuxedo Inn, Gadsden and Etowah County's only complete in-stock formal wear service. Tuxedo Inn, featuring over 12,000 in-stock tuxedos with over 80 styles by famous designers like Pierre Cardin, Lord West, and After Six. Tuxedo Inn offers the groom's tuxedo rental absolutely free with five or more in the wedding party. Tuxedo Inn, 1501 Rainbow Drive, across from Days Inn. Tuxedo Inn, open nights till 8. Professional Opticians, serving you since 1949. Professional Opticians offers a wide choice of frames. We also have a large selection of sunglasses in stock with ultraviolet filters and designer frames. Carrera, Bosch & Lomb, Christian Dior, and more. Professional Opticians has a lens fabricating laboratory in-house for fast, accurate service. Our technicians make sure your lenses are ground exactly like your doctor ordered. Professional Opticians, the name speaks for itself. We're back for the second quarter of play. 12 minutes to go in the half. Gadsden High School with a second and about a century mark of yardage here. There's Elders. He's going to roll right and pass. Over the middle, it's complete to Andy Swafford. Stop was made by Toby Bateman of the Blue Devils, but not until the game was, <coughs> excuse me, good for 15 yards, and the Gadsden High School Tigers have fought back for a third and five yards to go after a huge deficit. Oh, great pickup on Gadsden's part. You don't try to get it all in one chuck. Dominic Pinson had a shot at that one, took a swat at it, but was unable to knock it down. Third down and five, conversion down for the Tigers. They've got two wingbacks, Jimmy Williams and Andy Swafford. Williams is in motion. He's gonna run it to the right side, and he spins his way for the first down into Etowah Blue Devil territory. Stop was made by Scott Clough of the Blue Devils, but not until Jimmy Williams had hit and spun his way for a Gadsden High first down. A huge first down there after they had first down and about 30 yards to go after the penalty. Phil, it's real interesting. If you'll key on the nose guard of Etowah, number 44, Greg Childs, he finds Jimmy Williams when he comes to the line of scrimmage. He sees which side he's on, and he immediately goes in the opposite direction for that off-tackle play. That'll be interesting to watch. There's the give again to Swafford who cuts through two tacklers, but is thrown down by Dominic Pinson, one of the two tacklers. The pickup was good for five yards, however, and I think the Tigers will probably take five yards every first down if they can get it. They like Etowah now, starting to control the line of scrimmage, at least on the offensive side of the ball. The initial movement of Etowah's defense is also backwards, both teams really being able to move the ball so far. I'd like to welcome and thank Tom Chappell, who's getting some sideline shots for us tonight, as well as Mitch Moore, who's handling the spotting in tonight's game. Scott Hutchinson, of course, is our producer. There's the pitch by Elders to Shane Simpson on Shane's first run of the night, and he's thrown short of the first down after a pickup of three stop was made by Brent Kulovich of the Blue Devils. Great play by Chris that time. He would have gone down around the 45-yard line, but knowing that he was fixing to go down, he went ahead and got the ball to his tailback who picked up four additional yards and now they have third and short. Takes some good athletic talent to be able to run that option play properly and, and Chris did a good job there. He had several defenders. Third down and one yard to go for the Gadsden High Tigers. Seven to nothing if you joined us late. The Tigers scored first. The only score of the game was by Jimmy Williams' 72 yard touchdown run on the first offensive possession. And there's Jimmy Williams again around left end. He is chopped down in the backfield of the Blue Devils by Roselle Bradford, but not until he got another Gadsden High School first down. First and 10 for the Tigers. Boy, this guy is fun to watch, isn't he, Phil? Number 77, Kendrick Lewis that time was the pulling lineman trying to get out there to lay a block for Jimmy. Jimmy was so quick, he outran the block. The Blue Devils are looking a lot like Gadsden High's defense did on the first possession. They gave up a good bit of yardage on the drive. However, Gadsden High hunkered down here. Let's see if the Blue Devils can do the same thing. First and 10 for the Tigers. There's the reverse again. Inside reverse to Andy Swafford. He weaves his way through the backfield and is tattooed deep in the backfield at the 25-yard line, the defensive backfield, that is. He was stung by Toby Bateman on a vicious blow after a nine-yard run on the inside end around. Well, that's what Gaston had in mind on the first play from scrimmage to start the game, Phil, to give the ball to Jimmy, 
and hope the defense would read on Jimmy and go that direction and give it back to Andy in the opposite direction. This time it worked for them. Now they're, now they're in a situation, Phil, on second short where you might see a little something here. That's exactly what I was about to say, Mark, and I, I don't think that that's the last time we'll see that reverse play to Jimmy Williams because you can't not key on him. We've got a little mix-up in the backfield, but they've got it straightened out now. Marcellus Mostella in on offense for the Tigers. He's in there to block. He opens up a huge hole for Shane Simpson at right end. Stop was made by Dominic Pinson on another big hit in the defensive backfield for the Etowah Blue Devils. Phil, we have seen Mostella Marsalis kill some people on defense. That time he really leveled someone. That's the reason he was in there, to level someone on the offensive side of the ball. He is a big college prospect. He is going to play some ball somewhere. I believe you're right, as will several of these Gadsden High and Etowah players. Jimmy Williams still out of the game, and Marcellus is still in the game on offense. I don't believe we've seen Marcellus play offense very much. I wonder if Jimmy Williams is hurt or if they're just giving some experience. There's the blitz by Etowah, but Elders tucks it in and runs up the middle and fumbles the ball. It's fallen on, <coughs> excuse me, by Andy Swafford. Luckily for the Tigers, again, they fumble for the first down. Andy Swafford was the Johnny on the spot there as Elders was hit and fumbled the ball, carrying it like a loaf of bread, and Swafford was, had the presence of mind to fall on the ball before any of the Blue Devils could get it. That would have been a terrific defensive drive killer by the Blue Devils. But the Gadsden High School Tigers will hold on first and 10 for the Gadsden High Tigers. There's the give to Shane Simpson again up the middle. He is hit on the thigh, falls forward for six yards down to the one yard line. Second and goal for the Tigers. And I wonder who we see run the ball in this short yardage play. I can tell you who I would give it to, Phil. I'll give you three guesses. I think you and the whole Gadsden High crowd would, would have a vote for who to give it to. Let's not discount Chris Elder's contribution, though. He's quite an athlete, and he might just take it in himself. They've got Williams split out, though. Shane Simpson is the fullback. 6.36 to go, and the Tigers are threatening again. There's the fake give to Jimmy Williams, and Swafford couldn't get around for the block, and Elders is swarmed under by the Etowah defense. Mark Nichols leading that host of Etowah defenders, which also included the all-star David Rose. A big defensive play for the Blue Devils. A mix-up in the backfield that time for Gadsden. Mark Nichols didn't bite on anything. He stayed at home and uh, made the play the big defensive play on Etowah's part. It looked like Gadsden was going to march it on in. That uh, you're right, Mark, and that throws them all the way back to the 10-yard line where the Tigers have third and 10 from the 10, and it makes it tough here, third and 10 with the goal line. You've only got so much room to throw into. They don't have many defensive backs back there, Phil. There's the fake give to Jimmy Williams. He sets up the block for Elders, who rolls right. He's looking for someone to throw to. He's got Swafford. Touchdown, Tigers! Room to throw into. They don't have many defensive backs back there, Phil. There's the fake give to Jimmy Williams. He sets up the block for Elders who rolls right. He's looking for someone to throw to. He's got Swafford touchdown, Tigers. Andy Swafford sprung himself free for the touchdown after Elders rolled right. And Swafford freed himself to become wide open in the end zone for the score on Gadsden High School's possession on offense. And hopefully we can get a replay of that one. It was beautiful how Swafford was covered and then shucked his man for to become open there on the 10-yard scoring pass from Chris Elders. John Giles pumps the point after attempt straight through the uprights, as you can see, and that brings the score to 14 for the Tigers, nothing for the Interwall Blue Devils. Let's take a quick break on the Comcast Cable High School Game of the Week. It's feeding time for the beast in the basement again, and you know what that old furnace is going to do to your utility bills. But you don't have to let that monster upset your budget. Hello, I'm Bill Faubus with Faubus Sheet Metal. I'm your Alabama Power Certified Electric Heat Pump Dealer in Gadsden. 
We have financing available on approved credit, so call today for free in-home estimates. Thank you. Maybe you've given it some thought, but always found a reason to say no. Gadsden State says, yes, you can. Whatever your interest, there's a program that's just right for you. We say yes 